Hello everyone, welcome to the Carzod Koza office up in Johannesburg. I'm up for a few reasons, but one of them is to drive this, an all electric Golf. Now chances are you might have heard of this, but you definitely haven't seen one, unless you've seen me driving this one around. It was never sold in South Africa, but Volkswagen SA have brought in six units to do some real world testing, and they gave us one to help them out. So I've just been charging it here at the office. We've got our own EV points installed for electric vehicles. And the interesting thing for me about this Golf is that if I covered this sign, right? I mean, if that wasn't there, would you know that this was an electric car? Maybe if you were a car nerd, you'd realize that those wheels were never sold in South Africa. Those are unique to the car. But I mean, other than that, it's just a Golf. I mean, there's literally, there's not much about it, really. I mean, there's a couple of clues if you look closely. There's this cool blue line which goes across the headlights and the, and the bumper. And then there's a, obviously a sign which says e-Golf, which is pretty cool. Got another sign over there which says e-Golf and there's one on the back. But I mean, other than that, that is a bog standard Golf that just doesn't have a petrol motor, which I think is really cool. So come with me inside, let's take a look. Because not particularly special in here either. You'll notice the dials are different. So where you should have a rev counter, you've got this sort of charge and power meter. And I'll take you over what that all means. There's your consumption, 12.7 kilowatt hours to the 100. I'll explain that while I'm driving. And that's my range, 144 Ks uh, at the moment, which is plenty for today. Couple of other little clues. You've got a power flow meter, which you obviously wouldn't find in a normal Golf. And then down here behind the gear stick, doesn't seem to want to move ah it's because it's plugged in there's a little thing that says e-golf over there so i'm going to take you for a drive and uh, tell you what it's like to drive an electric golf okay let's go so obviously we're going to launch in a blaze of german fury <laughs> and it's not slow at all. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's slow down then. <laughs> That's the thing, electric cars aren't boring at all. This is probably one of the least powerful electric cars in the world and you will still have fun driving this. You'll still enjoy <laughs> acceleration. That torque is just so instant. Ah, oh, it's so much fun. I really, really like driving this car. I would be super happy to drive this thing every day of my life. So let me give you a quick review of the e-Golf. Um, it's like driving a Golf, except better. Yeah, that's it. It's, uh, it's quieter, it's smoother, it's way more efficient. You got all the tech in here that you get from a normal Golf. It's so comfortable. Um, yeah, that's it. The other reason why it is significantly better to drive an electric car in traffic is because of a phenomenon called regeneration. So the e-Golf has two modes, one where it doesn't have any regeneration and one where it does. And the way you access it is just by flicking the gear pedal down into a mode that says B. Now, I must be honest, I'm not sure why it says B because if I'm not mistaken, regeneration starts with an R. But anyway, I'll, I'll look into that later. But anyway, now regeneration mode is switched on. So this little power charge indicator that we saw earlier, what that does is swing up and down between the power and the charge zone. So if I'm using the throttle, it is obviously using some of the battery's power. However, when I'm coasting, or when I'm rolling downhill and I'm coming off the throttle, then I'm actually using the electric motor to generate charge, which is busy filling up the batteries. And the more you coast and the more you roll downhill, the more you extend the range and the charge on your battery. Okay, so let's tackle the issue of consumption. And what's great is this e-Golf is actually a really economical car in terms of its electricity consumption. So what you do is you start with the size of the battery, which in the e-Golf is 35 kilowatt hours. Now that's actually very small. In the Jag I-Pace, it's 96 kilowatt hours. 
in a Tesla it's about 100, in the new Porsche Taycan it's about 93. So it's a pretty tiny battery in here. But it's only powering one motor and that means this car is not nearly as fast as a Tesla or an I-Pace or a Porsche Taycan. But it does mean that it's very efficient and that's what you want from a day-to-day -day car. So start with the size of the battery, 35 kilowatt hours. Multiply that by a cost of a unit of electricity at your home or at your office. In South Africa, it's roughly two rand, goes up a little bit, but let's just call it two rand for now. So a full tank in the e-Golf is 70 bucks. And for your 70 rand, you can potentially do, I would say, about 300 kilometers if you're driving extremely carefully. That's the best, best case scenario, right? But I would say, realistically here, you could squeeze 250Ks out of a tank pretty much without really trying too hard. So 70 Rand gets you 250 kilometers. 70 Rand in terms of petrol these days wouldn't even get you five liters. And there's no way in any car on earth you're doing 250 kilometers on five liters of petrol. Think about it that way. That's how radically, how much radically cheaper an electric car is to run on fuel compared to a traditionally powered car. What blows my mind a bit is how old the e-Golf actually is. I think it's important to note that the first e-Golf came out back in 2014. It really was a pioneer in the electric car movement. So as good as all the tech in here is, the game has moved on, especially in terms of battery capacity. But it's been wonderful to sample this e-Golf in preparation for the arrival of Volkswagen's next generation electric vehicles next year, namely the ID3 and ID4, and we'll keep you updated on both of those as soon as we have more information. I'm looking forward to driving the ID4, but mostly so that I can be as cool as this guy in his mustard jacket. Okay, there we go. Should we take a quick look at the engine? I think, let me show you what it looks like under the bonnet. It's pretty interesting. Oh, how am I gonna do this with one hand? Let's see. Ah, that was easy. There we go, check it out. So, that is obviously where an engine would be. There's the motor down there. And the batteries are down there. All these big, dangerous looking orange wires. Still got a traditional you know, uh, 12 volt to run the sort of basic systems, but that is the inside of an e-golf. Look how much space there is. It's just like all this extra space. And I mean, besides that, like I said, there's nothing on the outside to really give it away as being electric. But as soon as you go into the bonnet, it becomes very, very obvious that this is something quite special. So. Very cool. Thanks to Volkswagen for letting us play with one of their toys for a couple of months. And every time I come up here, I'll do a bit of an update on the e-Golf. I absolutely love this thing. It's so much fun. I really hope everyone gets to experience an electric car really, really soon. Okay, cool. Check out some other videos on our YouTube channel. We've got the Jaguar I-Pace as well if you're into learning about some more electricity. Okay, bye. Did you know that we also sell really awesome car themed merchandise? Check out our range of custom t-shirts and prints at our online store now. Simply click on the square box on your screen and we'll take you there or the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.